Thank you, Stefan. Thank you, organizer, friends. Uh, so I am going to present one of the projects, one European project called Socentais. Can be understood as a, an open science platform. In let me try to present the whole thing, what we have done in the last two years. Okay, uh, this is a citizen science project. Now many people are using that term. Some years ago, it wasn't clear if it's only volunteers going to the field and take pictures of bears or what. We understand uh, citizen science as a wide concept, referring to any kind of contribution from the general public, uh, amateurs or. Uh, non-professionalist working on providing resources actively contributing okay it is very important the, the sense actively instead of uh, watching what is happening in, on twitter to understand social behavior we ask them to provide experimental data for instance this can be one one of the things but um, after two years i have the fear that uh, citizen science can be understood, can be understood as a restriction level or any kind of license no matter whatever you do with uh, people, participatory experiments, whatever it is interesting. In fact, there are many, many um, different possibilities for funding in Europe in the in the age 2020. Some people address citizen science in global system science, as mentioned before. Some uh, you can address citizen observatories, collective awareness platforms. You can address uh, science 2.0. At the end, uh, all this stuff are asking for for us to engage with the general public okay and it has many dimensions about science policy and society fostered and leveraged thanks to the the possibility of ict tools right so um following the holistic view of citizen science there are many kind of participation many models about what we ask people to analyze scientific data analyzing picture as mentioned before like universe uh, we are asking people to pr provide experimental data to refine and validate our models. Uh, we are asking people to collect uh, scattered knowledge and collect data, uh, acting as human sensing whenever the, te uh, the technology devices are not available to work, like electronic nodes, we can ask them. Of course, they are providing resources, I mentioned before, a volunteer computing platform and so on. And one of the power of the collaboration is what we call collective intelligence, not only a scattered intelligence or, or a scattered knowledge, also uh, ask the, the crowd to, coll to interact more intelligent than individuals, right? And of course, the grassroots initiatives and, um, and stuff like this. Uh, citizen science happening online, offline, uh, for, with uh, big formalism some methodologies, also informal approaches, just inspirational approaches, and so on. And we are, um, you can see, uh, there are many kind of experiments. Some are w one single day, one single hack a day, whatever, or you have regular in time projects. And you see the, the wide range of stakeholders collaborating. This, has, this is what we have done for the last two years, talking with everybody about the different impacts of citizen science on the Socentize project. This is, let me introduce, you can check the website, uh, socentize.eu. It is funded by the European Commission. Uh, I think, if I'm not wrong, this was the first uh, project funded by the Digital Science Unit, led by Jose Cota. Uh, this is a support action. Usually, support action are projects to coordinate, to promote, to um, leverage the uptake of initiatives. In this case, this was the, the society, uh, the support action promoted to devoted to citizen science. The budget is, was quite tight for two years. Project is a um, little bit more than seven hundred thousand euros. The consortium was quite um, tight also. Six partners in Brazil, Austria, Portugal, and Spain. Uh, we had external advisory board uh, David Anderson from the Boeing community I guess you know Boeing is the most powerful volunteer computing platform Drew Hammond from the Future Everything Festival and grassroots movement in in, in Manchester and Stephen Bamford from Suniverse uh, and we subcontracted the University of Barcelona and also the SER in Geneva the objectives of our project briefly was to coordinate outreach and engage with the people, uh, to promote participatory experiment, to provide uh, support to the communities and do development and integration of technologies, 
And one of the innovative issues here for us, from our side, we are usually, usually working on technologies and stuff, it was to create, to shape the future using doing policy recommendation, okay? So our approach was from the beginning to be open, to try to collaborate with everybody, uh, trying to be efficient, uh, invest one single euro in, in the most efficient way, try to be uh, exploratory in the sense of whatever is already done, we want to complete, uh, try to be inspirational on that thing. And all, always we don't, we, we don't want the policy agendas or the, ex, or the experiments to be something from our side, from the, our consortium. We want it to be uh, a result of the community interactions and the endorsement of the community. Uh, I think it's very important, but it is very coherent. Uh, usually, citizen science, open science in Brussels and any other places are uh, led by fussy uh, movements, and you have restricted meetings about open science and stuff like that. Um, we want it to be open and, and coherent on, on that level. So about, about um, we have done many hackathons. We have uh, our, uh, prepared competition. We were working with the media and so on, trying to communicate what is citizen science. This is the typical thing. Also to communicate uh, our results. This is not important. Just uh, uh, I wanted to highlight one thing was not cre was we realized there. Is, w the, sorry, we re we realized there is no single space devoted to citizen science. There are many fab lab museum, uh, citizen, uh, sorry, science museums, and there are um, dissemination rooms, show rooms, and stuff like that. We wanted to create one human lab, and we created in one building in Zaragoza called Etopia, the Center for Art and Technology. We created one exhibition, citizen science lab, with uh, 20 computers where you can sit and start doing citizen science. You have also kinetic, and you can uh, to interact with the uh, solar system, you have um, remote experimentation to learn about the dynamics of, of pendulums, for instance. So, uh, this is one of the outcomes of the societies, okay, that we realize there is no, and we want to promote this, uh, maybe in future European course or whatever. So about participatory experiments, one of the most important things for us, one of the main pillars was to uh, pro demonstrate the possibilities of participation by providing a, a concrete results. Uh, the problem is that there are many formats of participation, so I, I present here some of them, the, the possibilities starting pooling of resources. Uh, we have like um, 8,000 computers from the Bruntis every day connected to our servers, and we are running a couple of um, Boeing-based applications. Uh, we have performed many projects about data collection, uh, about happiness, about uh, um, energy consumption at home, for instance. Also, uh, we are asking people to provide the quality, in the, to control the quality of water at home. It is very nice because usually you can address the, the there are many official data about quali, qua, uh, water control in the rivers or in the city uh, infrastructure, but not at home okay yeah, so we want how to go to the micro level of detail ask people to contribute uh, about analysis task we had many uh, uh, applications about scientific images analysis. I will present some of them later. We have some serious games on different platforms. Uh, participatory experiments. I mentioned here Project Q, where we are uh, asking people to participate in digital surveys with real money to understand human behavior, like uh, dilemmas and this, this kind of stuff. Uh, we also created uh, one project about Arduino full equipped uh, beehives in Barcelona, Bordeaux, and Helsinki. And we did, uh, we tried to understand this collective intelligence by trying to generate collective intelligence to model, to model it and to refine our models about collective intelligence. So we created also experiment and tools for that. You see there the number of, of users and so on. It's quite nice for a single project. Um, about one of the experiments you can see there, the, the screenshot of the application about cell spotting, you see different human stem cells uh, under cancer treatment. And we are asking then, is it rounded, is it fuzzy, what is it? Uh, so it depends if it's necrosis or apoptosis, okay? We created the didactic units, 
we created uh, videos and so on. But I want to highlight <laughs> where did we go with this application. In, st in addition to the 400,000 students in Spain, we wanted to the older, the University of, of Experience, to the older audience. This kind of um, risk of exclusion groups is very important for us, and we wanted to, and we engaged with the University of Experience in Portugal, and we had like hundreds of older people analyzing and, and thinking about biotechnology, okay? And thinking about European policy on science. Uh, another experiment about the analysis of sun images from the University of Coimbra also. Uh, there is 100 years of observation. We are asking people to check uh, sunspot. It's quite <laughs> easy. The thing here where we want, we went with, with this application to the jail, to the prison in, in, in Coimbra to ask them to analyze. Uh, so this is very important, not only for the uh, research data, okay? The number of analysis in two, three days is not that big. What it is important is the feeling of, of inclusion of the people out there. Um, uh, in my case, I went to the jail in Zaragoza and, and w many people is in jail thinking about uh, their problems, okay? 1% of, of the people want to get out of jail and start working again and they need some kind of diploma and anything proving that they are acting well during the last three years, for instance. Um, we, provide, we want to provide uh, diplomas and something real, saying you have contributed for three years working on uh, astronomy science, and this is very, very important for them. Okay? It opens new opportunities for science and for social inclusion, innovation about uh, one of the application about we constructed many full equipped Arduino uh, beehives and we have opened the portal for the monitoring of the bees uh, behavior about noise, weight uh, um, and stuff like that. There are some uh, placed in Barcelona also in Bordeaux and Helsinki uh, this is my little toy. I li really love that about collective intelligence. We we also we need to understand what it, what really means collective intelligence. We understand collective intelligence where people contribute, where people uh, share their ideas. To s when they see what others are doing in real time, they evaluate others. They uh, incorporate the the best solution for, to your solution and make the, make things evolve. And collectively, uh, the group is better than the individuals, okay? But this is a, just a theory, and we want to model. So we created one participatory experiment about collective music composition, asking people to, to do music, a kind of virtual jam session where uh, everybody is uh, synchronized with everybody. And we went with this to an unexpected environment, the Sonar Plus D Festival, uh, part of the Sonar Festival in Barcelona with a couple of hip hop artists from Zaragoza, very known uh, in Spain, Violadores del Verso, and they, uh, we asked 200 people to create patterns. You can see the screenshot of the, of the tool. The top sequencer, you can start playing bass and drum, and you can see what others are doing in real time in the sequencer in the bottom of the page. And you, you are synchronized, so you can, you can mix in real time. If you like something, okay, I like this bass line, I drag and drop and you make things evolve, okay? And we an analyze the structure and the dynamics of the, of the information sharing, the evolution, the performance, and so on and so on. Okay, but it, it is a very nice uh, experiment from the competition, uh, experiment and experience from the uh, inception with the artist to the real live session in the festi music festival interpreting the music created by the crowd, okay? So, uh, getting back to the boring stuff, <laughs> no, it's amazing, uh, about the policy recommendation, okay? We wanted to help the European Commission to shape the, the policy agendas, and I have to say that the Digital Science Unit, they are great, they are very open, they just need us to, to work with them, to provide them um, a proof that there is a need to do something, okay? So, we wanted to... Um, shape a kind of white paper uh, collecting the cross-cutting concern of the community 
saying we've been working a couple of years in participatory workshop interview with experts uh, in target groups and so on uh, open questionnaires and we shared the initial draft or draft of ideas to of cross-cutting concerns and things in need of change policy action draft ideas to shape the future we shared with the people in the green green paper we created an open call for contributions and we had at the end like 200 people uh, discussing online in tools like Cbase or all our ideas and stuff like that, also using open source tools for uh, the open debates, uh, and shaping, helping us to to refine and endorse the the, the agenda. Um, I have to say this was uh, we understood this process of policy like a participatory experiment itself. We create the same engagement plan, the same tools, the development, and user support. Um, the problem in this case, I believe the, that we are not used to do policy recommendation in a language that uh, Brussels people are needing, that they, they need us different language. But okay, this is again another proof of action, that I need, uh, another area I need of action, okay? So um, in the green paper, we, after one year of discussion, we saw that there were some key leading questions like uh, definition of, of and the scope of citizen science, when it's working and when it's not, the deployment facilitation, awareness, drivers and barriers, and impact measure and evaluation. So some of the, um, of the recommendations from our side, uh, well, from the community, we shape it in a uniform way. Um, presenting what is possible, what is not possible, and we shared with the people uh, some of the proposed action uh, that we uh, that we uploaded to the platform and presented in the white paper, and then upload to the discussion forum was about, for instance, to reform the research and evaluation reputation systems. Uh, to adopt, we suggest the European Commission to adopt open source and open access policy with all the differences in different countries and so on, it, to identify, catalog, and align funding programs related with citizen science, to lots, there are some just examples of the general recommendation that we suggested one year ago. So um, after, you cannot see very well the, the white paper, we created the white paper, one thing I like is the, the design of the white paper. We brought the contributors to the cover, saying that this is the important thing. This is not something from Social Ties. 200 individuals and network, the most, some of the most important actors in the citizen science contributed here. Um, and we wanted to create it complementing what it is already. There are many good pra papers about environmental citizen science, about uh, science museums uh, agenda, and infrastructures, white papers, and so on. So we wanted to complement that. Uh, you can please download it from Socentai's website. Uh, but we shape it in, in this way. We understood the main challenges of the, of, the European, of the European policy agenda regarding citizen science. And we shape the activities in three levels, macro level, meso level, and micro level. Uh, macro refers to the um, policy funders, the policy makers, and the strategy of shaping the future at European and national scale. Meso level, ref well, let me go. Mi micro levels means the researchers, the group doing citizen science, the individuals, the communities. And then the meso level ref refers to those institution, association, citizen science association, and stuff like that that we are deploying to, to increase the professionalization of citizen science, okay? So, um, in, brief, in brief, to the micro level, we, we said almost nothing. We understood and uh, all the people said, there is an ongoing revolution. Do not try to legislate or to, to make it um, 
different that, that is happening. Instead of that, you have to learn what of, of, uh, you have to learn of the ongoing revolution. All these alternative uh, practices they should be adopted by the industry, by the policy making and the research institution themselves about all metrics, uh, peer to peer revolution uh, evaluation and uh, stuff like that. Okay. But about the macro level, uh, we suggested a couple of major actions to, tar to create targeted programming about citizen science. Um, there are many opportunities, but it is important to use the same name for, uh, for the community and also to mainstream citizen science as a cross-cutting practice on any kind of research uh, proposal. Uh, the, the same way now you are asking all the projects to include a dissemination plan, please include an engagement plan with the, with the different actors, okay? And that could be help, that could help all the researchers also to, to, to prepare their, uh, their application, understanding that it is possible to do different science using different resources now. Uh, we also recommended the creation of one thing that we call citizen science think tank, a kind of reflection group with, at European level with one representative per country to shape the agenda uh, at European, to promote, coordinate and evaluate uh, ongoing and the future agendas about citizen science. Okay. About the meso level, this kind of scaffolding infrastructure initiatives and institution, um, we understood they want to play a leading role on the citizen science uh, agenda. Um, so we asked them to identify, to crowd mapping, by crowd mapping to provide uh, concrete guidelines and custom, custom, sorry, uh, specific assistance to the, to the groups in their countries and in their environment. Um, they need to build those communities to, and to develop the interaction channels, meaning create open source create for uh, web tools, for uh, mobile applications, uh, also for the middleware for the infrastructure and so on. And um, they have to be coherent and if there is a policy agenda about a national country of a citizen science association, please include a citizen committee in your, in your um, decision making process. And also, please, re uh, we understood there is a need the, uh, for recognition of alternative practices. For instance, people making robots and making new kind of science, they do not have, re uh, uh, they don't have a clear way to get funds. So this kind of uh, institution of a citizen side, they should promote alternative way of funding also for those uh, makers, okay? Um, uh, I, we couldn't go into detail despite because this is what the, the community said and um, I wanted to present that me, myself, I've been working on a meso-level institution, Iberseries Foundation in Spain and Portugal since seven, seven years ago and it takes a lot of time to establish a national foundation about citizen science so at, so far it is working in Spain. We, we included the national ministry, regional ministries of science and local governments also. And we included the, main, the major research center in Spain, CSIC and CIMAT, also the University of Zaragoza. And what we all decide is to create one single institution, one single window to help researchers, to help citizens to uh, uh, adopt citizen science practices. Uh, so we have the, the servers, the data center to to run the experiments. We have the, the technical staff doing deployment and porting of application and stuff like that. Uh, the good thing that Spain and Portugal, that usually we are not seen as the leading countries, we are helping other countries like Austria or or Alemania to to shape or Germany, sorry, to to shape the future. Okay. What we have done, all, all this stuff, we've been using mostly open source technologies, also other technologies, but you can see here a kind of picture of what we've been using for two years for the different experiments. I want to highlight PyBosa, one open source tool used for the scientific image analysis, for instance, and 
it was created in after one hackathon and now it's growing very fast it's it's working like Suniverse but in an open source way okay and but there are many others we are so uh, this is everything from my side please ask me thank you